Hey, good morning, everybody. This is Bill with NotaryCoach.com. It is 6.30 in the morning on the Saturday after St. Patrick's Day. So I am definitely running a little slower uh, than normal. Uh, but that's okay. Um, I've got uh, a morning full of signings, which I'm very grateful for. And when you have people who are counting on you uh, in a business like this, there's no calling in sick. So you do what you have to do. Um, I've had a few, actually quite a few people, actually uh, message me um, about specific tools that you're going to be using your day-to-day -day operations as a mobile notary and signing agent for the mortgage industry. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to talk um, about as many as I can think of right now on video and then I'll try to follow this up with a, uh, an article that can go into a little more detail. And so it's easier for me just to kind of process this if I break it into the five phases and then I'll, I'll tell you kind of all the things you, you need to be thinking about uh, from the big picture if you're just getting started or maybe you've even made a little headway. In phase one, this is where you become a notary public for the state in which you reside. So um, every state that I know of, you at least have to have your notary stamp, so I think that's a given. Um, some states require a notary journal where you record um, all your notarial acts. So uh, in, in Arizona, where I am, that is a requirement, so I've got that. And even if it's not required, uh, most states highly recommend it just to cover your own ass. All right, then in phase two, that's where you become a certified signing agent for the mortgage industry. And in this one, this is where you're going to get your background check from the National Notary Association. You are going to take the certification exam from the National Notary Association. And you're gonna purchase your errors and omissions insurance. This is a requirement kind of across the board. Um, different title companies, different signing companies have their own requirements. <clears throat> so a general general rule is some signing companies only require 25000 so that's the most minimum. And errors and omissions insurance actually kind of protects you um, if you were to make a valid mistake on some documents, so it helps cover some of your legal costs and um, those types of things. So it's definitely well worth it. Now, um, I recommend personally that you have at least a $100,000 coverage. Yeah, but that also depends on the market city that you're going to be working in. You know, uh, if you're dealing with transactions that are of a higher value, you know, where homes are up over five, six hundred thousand. If you're in Southern California, you know that's a drop in the hat. So maybe a couple million dollars. Some title companies require five million dollars in coverage. So do a little bit of research, but that's what you want to look at there for phase two. In phase three. That's where you're gonna be learning documents and things like that, so you wanna get your hands on the practice document package. I'm working on being able to release uh, a version of that for you guys through my course at notarycoach.com, but it's not ready yet as of March 18th of 2017. Uh, in phase four, uh, phase four is your business development. So this is where you're talking about sales, networking, you're going to want to join a networking group. You're going to want to have business cards. You're going to want to have a website. Uh, if you'd like to take a mine, take a look at mine, uh, feel free to do so. It's super simple, nothing fancy at all, but it generates a surprising amount of uh, phone calls for notary services. So check out mobilenotaryaz.com. What you're also going to see on there is a very easy way for title officers to book my services. So if they need a signing, they can do that. I use a service called Calendly.com. That's C-A-L-E-N-D-L-Y.com. And you can see they click the link. I set up the types of appointments that are available, which are usually just signing appointments. Uh, and people book it and they go straight to my calendar. It's linked to my Gmail calendar. <clears throat> so let's talk a little bit about that. I love using Gmail. I'm an Android phone user, so I've got... Um, Google Calendar, which is great in linking to pretty much all of my clients as well. Um, you've got to have a smartphone with GPS on it. GPS is huge, and that's a lifesaver in this business. 
Uh, number one, you should use it all the time, even if you know where you're going, because it gives you gives you traffic updates and alternative alternative routes if you need it. Um, business cards, a priority. You've got to have a professional address too. I mentioned I use Gmail. I have personal Gmail, and then I also they have a business enterprise one too, where you can get a professional looking email address as well, and it's a little more secure and highly recommended. Then you've got to have a printer. So you'll have a couple different options. You can have a printer that fits in the back of your car or in your trunk. I do not do that. I have a printer at home, um, but I'm on the road all the time. So I'll either have, use a secure printing source like a UPS store or FedEx, Kinko's, something like that so I can get my printing done. Or of course you can just do it at home. You have some options there. It just kind of depends on your volume. And then, as far as stuff that I keep with me in my car, I'm still looking for the perfect brief, briefcase to hold my stamp, my notary journal, and the documents. Um, but I haven't found that yet, so I don't have any recommendations as far as that goes. As far as in your car, I'm a minimalist, so I don't keep very much with me. And sometimes that can bite me in the ass a little bit because I don't have acknowledgments or jurats and things like that. But those, I, to me, it's worth it for what, something I need once a year. I just don't want to carry it around with me all the time. But people who are a little more OCD and a little more organized than I am, they actually carry that in their briefcase. They've got all the types of acknowledgments. They might have uh, credible witness affidavits. You know, all of that stuff uh, in, can come in handy. And it's definitely going to be more professional if you've got it. By the nature of my business, I don't necessarily need those so much because I'm working so closely with title companies that are OCD and organized um, that it's few and far between that I need it. Uh, and then in phase five, you're going to need to find a way to find, uh, do gratitude, whether that's handwritten thank you cards or as I mentioned in the previous video, you can do services like sendoutcards.com. Um, I think there's a bonds.com now that has a similar card service that way. Um, and as far as bookkeeping goes, I mentioned this before too, I use GoDaddy Online Bookkeeping. Um, in this phase two, we can talk a little bit about uh, your structure as a business. You know, should you be an LLC, a corporation, or just work as a sole proprietor? That's a very personal decision, and I wish I could just advise you, but I am not a tax or legal advisor. So you're gonna wanna get some some advice from a professional as far as that goes. What I can tell you is that my tax guy was very, very insistent that I form an LLC uh, to avoid a self-employment tax that's automatic without it. So again, do some research on that. I don't know exactly how that works. All right, I hope some of that is helpful. Um, like I said, I'll try to follow this up with a article that can go into a little more depth on it. Hope you guys are having a great weekend. I'll talk to you soon.